Hi guys, Big E with Yoshimira here today with Tim Welch. He is our tech wizard slash sales manager slash know-it-all guy. Today we're going to talk about repacking your muffler. Now, why do you need to repack your muffler? Both dirt and street both need to be repacked. Um, number one, you need to do it to get the most performance out of your bike. Number two, you need to do it, it's like a maintenance thing. Just like a clutch, a uh, muffler needs to be maintained. So depending on what you ride, how you ride, um, those things need to be done. So Tim is going to tell us a little bit about, give us some of the signs that a muffler needs to be repacked. If a, if a consumer is like, hey, I wonder if I need to do that. Well, number one first is um, time. If it's been a while, if it's been a year or two since you've looked inside the muffler, it's probably time to check it out just to make sure everything's in good shape. Um, the next most obvious thing would be uh, anything that's discolored, whether it's the body of the muffler or the carbon fiber. If there is a hot spot or if you see yellowing in the carbon fiber, those are signs of, of heat and signs of heat means that packing is wearing out. Uh, the last thing for discoloring would be badges and stickers. Those things uh, tend to be affected by heat as well. And then also uh, a real quick test is right knocking on it like a hollow sound? Yeah, sure. It's, it's easy. You know, you can tap on the front, tap on the back, and if you tap in the middle and it, there's a different tone, the chances are there's a void in the packing from, from heat. Okay, so the big question now is should I attempt to do this or should I send my muffler back to Yoshimir to do it? So I think, Tim, maybe you can help the consumer answer that question of, you know, should I, should I invest in buying a pneumatic rivet gun and do this stuff myself or should I send it back to the guys that do it every day? Yeah, right. So, uh, you know, basically the best thing to do is finish watching this video and decide can you do it or not? Is it something that it's worth your time to do? Um, the second thing is do you have the tools and materials? Um, there's a couple of specialty tools, uh, there's a pneumatic rivet gun and a few other things that it kind of adds up and when you look at what we charge to do it here in the factory, um, you might decide that it's better to send it to the pros who built it the first time to um, do the job there. So what's the cost of, of if, if a consumer sent their muffler to us to do a repack job, including all the materials? So it starts probably $65, $70. You're going to get back a new muffler with packing, providing it's just a straight repack. Um, of course, they're shipping on either side as well. And if it needs components, we'll talk to that consumer and say, hey, you need this, this, and this, right? So, because yeah. once we get into the, into the muffler, there might be some damage to the baffle or the core or something, right? Yeah, exactly. As soon as the product gets here, we disassemble it and we assess it. If there's any loose or worn parts, we'll call up the customer and ask them if they want to replace them and make some recommendations. So before you dive into doing this, think about the expense of maybe shipping the muffler back and forth. And then also, um, the headache you might have of trying to do this the first time or second time. If you're into it, then go for it. If not, send it to the pros. Okay, so you've decided you're going to do this repack by yourself. You're going to need some essential tools. You need safety glasses, you're going to need gloves. We've already talked that you need a, a pneumatic rivet gun. Um, Tim, what are some of the essential tools now they're going to need to do this? Feeler gauge set, we actually use that to help put the end caps in. A gram scale to weigh out the packing so you have the proper amount of packing in your muffler. Soft-faced hammer so we don't scratch or damage anything putting it together. A center punch is a critical, critical part of uh, reassembling the muffler. A uh, sharp drill bit that's uh, suitable for drilling into stainless steel. Then a good solid workbench that's covered in rubber, cardboard, even a towel so that you prevent damaging or scratching the muffler when you're putting it back together. So the first step is the disassembly process. Tim, can you walk us through this process? Yeah, step number one is take out the end cap. You want to take a razor blade and cut the silicone seal between the end cap and the muffler body. It makes knocking the end cap out a whole bunch easier. And then you're going to need a center punch, right? Yeah, we're going to use a center punch and knock the mandrel um, into the center of the rivet which really makes the drill bit uh, cut a lot easier and will save a whole bunch of headache and grinding rivets off later on. And then uh, drill speed is important, correct? Yeah, stainless steel is really sensitive to drill speed. If the drill's going too fast, the rivet gets hard and you have to grind the rivets off. This is where that sharp drill bit comes into place. Exactly. Um, then you're going to need a uh, soft mallet to kind of uh, massage that piece off, right? Yeah, exactly. You're going to want to take that soft mallet and tap it side to side and work it out gently. If you get it two sideways on one side or the other, it'll get stuck in there and you'll end up denning or scratching your end cap trying to get it out. And then the last part of it is removing the baffle. Yeah, exactly. You're going to pull the baffle out, pull the packing out. Make sure you maybe put the packing in a plastic bag and tie it up. It's really messy and just get it right out to the trash can and out of your way. So the next step in this process is cleaning and inspection. Tim, can you take us through some of the uh, things that they need to be looking for? 
We'll take a razor blade that we used before and we'll scrape off the silicone and some of that residue from the inside of the muffler and the end cap. When you pull the baffle out, the inside of the muffler and the baffle and the end cap a lot of times are covered in carbon. You're going to want to take a wire brush or maybe some scotch Brite and clean that all up. Um, the last thing is just cleaning the outside of all the parts. Just soap and water, get it all scrubbed down so you have a nice uh, clean work surface to work with when you're done. So a big thing too as you're inspecting, you need to be looking at the holes in both your cap and your canister, making sure they're round and not oval and oversized, right? Yeah, exactly. A lot of times um, when a muffler gets worn out, um, it really puts a lot of load and stress on the baffle and all the parts. You want to make sure that the baffle, the tailpipe, the end caps, that all those joints are nice and tight and um, they're not oval or wallered out, like you said. What about um, sizing on the tubes and stuff like that? Well, one of the benefits that we have here at the shop is we have the specs for all those things. And when we're doing it here, we can actually go back and check with our gauges. But at home, just when you're sliding it together, it should be a nice tight fit. It shouldn't be too tight. But if it moves around and you can hear it kind of clunk around a little bit, it might be a little too loose. And you can give us a call and we can kind of advise you from there. And then this is the part of the process, too, where if you're going to repolish it or make it look new again, this is the time when you would do that. Yeah, exactly. So for like aluminum, you could use a, a regular aluminum metal polish. Um, you know, typical waxes and cleaners on carbon fiber. Just kind of go over, look at the care and maintenance instructions for your exhaust pipe. Get everything cleaned up and polished up. Get the new stickers on it. Get it looking good. Okay, so now the fun part, reassembly. Tim, talk to us about reassembly. This is one of the hardest parts to get right. One of the most important things is to keep the baffle centered and make sure you use all the packing. As you're packing, you're going to want to make sure it's tight coming all the way up to the top. You get the thing crooked, you're going to put the end cap back on. Um, there's a good chance you're going to damage the muffler and or the end cap. What about the, the packing unevenly? So it's going to create hot spots, is that correct? Yeah, so you'll get a hot spot and what will happen, that'll cause the packing to deteriorate faster and it could very likely damage your muffler canister as well. I think it's important to remember we have quite a few packing kits that fit into these mufflers, Tim? Yeah, we basically have two styles. Um, the first style is specific to that muffler, and you have to use everything in the kit. And then we have some that cross over a few different muffler lengths. With those kits, we provide a, a size chart, and this is where the gram scale comes in. You're gonna wanna take the gram scale, look at your muffler, and make sure you use that amount. So can you explain the importance of using the appropriate amount of uh, packing material in the muffler? Yeah, sure, so um, in racing, We've found that as little as 50 to 100 grams of packing, um, we can measure the difference of power on the dyno. So if you like peak power, use exactly the amount of packing that we've uh, suggested for you. Okay, so I know when I've ever attempted to try to do this, the hardest part is getting the end cap on. Yeah, the end caps are definitely the hardest part. Um, number one with the end caps, they're very sharp. The end of the canister is sharp, the end cap sharp. Be very careful. You can cut yourself, you can damage components. Just Make sure you're safe there. The next thing is when you're putting them together, take your time, use that soft face mallet, tap it in gently, try to really, really not damage anything. When it gets tight, you can always use a, a couple of tricks that we use. We actually use feeler gauges on occasion to kind of wedge and cheat in some of the tight corners and things like that. So with our packing kits, they come with everything you need to do the reassembly. You have the packing material, you have badges, stickers, rivet bands, and you also have the rivet. So there's something specific about our rivets that is different. We use what are called closed-end rivets. The, the rivets that you get at most hardware stores are pop rivets. And we use the closed-end rivets because it allows us to keep a tight seal on the rivet head. With a with store-bought Home Depot style rivet, the mandrels that help pull the rivet sometimes can fall out and create a small air leak. You know, and it's funny, we actually get a lot of phone calls from customers asking, you know, these rivets are hard, why don't we, you know, why don't we use bolts? Well, we don't use bolts for a very specific reason, and that's because um, when there's heat involved on the motorcycle, um, the metal expands and contracts at different rates, and the bolts actually can loosen up. Mufflers get too hot for Loctite, so Loctite burns out. So we decided a long time ago to go away from bolts and go to rivets so we had a, a better permanent solution for assembling mufflers. Okay, so we have two different kinds of rivet bands. We have an overlapping rivet band where the first and last hole get shared, and then we have a floating rivet band that just sits between a series of two or three holes. 
So for overlapping rivet bands, there's a few tips and tricks that, that I like to use. First of all, with all rivet bands, get all the rivets in and started before you start popping any of the rivets. Um, for overlapping, I like to start on the second hole, follow all the way around, and then put the last one in first. As you're popping every rivet, you want to make sure and use your hand and adjust and make sure you don't have any raised areas of the rivet band so it stays nice and straight. For the floating rivet band, um, I start in the middle. Start in the middle, center the rivet on the band. You have the other two rivets in. Pop the center one and then work the edges out and then pop the outside ones to make sure that the rivet band stays tight. So you've got your muffler all riveted up, ready to go. Now you want to put a little bit of a silicone seal on the outside of the cap. We use a high temperature silicone to get that done. Yeah, so I've actually seen the guys in the back, they have a cool little trick they do. They take the silicone and they squirt it into a baggie. They cut just the tip off so they can put a really fine bead of silicone around the edge of the end cap and just wipe it off, keep it nice and clean. Okay, so you've got your muffler all reassembled. When you put it back on the bike, make sure you take the time to wipe it down with some Windex or some alcohol. You want to get all the oil from your hands off that muffler because you don't want to stain it. One of the best tips I could, I could give to anybody is uh, do the same thing a race team guys do. When the muffler is all repacked, take that muffler, weigh it with your gram scale. And when you're doing periodic maintenance on the bike, um, pull the muffler off, check it. When it's 50 to 100 grams lighter, um, it's time to repack. If you're in Southern California, drop by the shop, drop it off. Um, if not, mail it in to us. If you want to do it yourself, give our customer service guys a call and we'll get you fixed up with all the parts you need. So there you have it guys, some of the tricks and tips that we use over the years to get your muffler all dialed in. Um, remember that we're here for you. So whether you're sending it in or you're gonna attempt this yourself, give us a call if you have any questions. Make sure you keep your rubber side down.